Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you to our 67th meeting. How about that, right? Wow. What? Woo Sounds what? like a lot of numbers here. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, you have before you uh, the agenda that was emailed, and of course, the whole packet. I'll need a motion to adopt the agenda, please. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Next order of business is going to be your September 26, uh, 2019 meeting minutes. Um, we'll need a motion to approve those or any corrections that you may see fit. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. So item number five, um, old business uh, that we've had many conversations about is the Vietnam Visitors uh, Center. And we really have no new information uh, to pass on today, obviously still on our radar. And we will keep you apprised of, of that as it, as it continues to move forward. Uh, Glenn and others, no new info to share. Yes, sir. We call out to the base and ask for anything new on it, and they said nothing. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number six, we're going to go through the strategic initiative work and promotion. Uh, Kim, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, and I'm going to turn it over to Teresa. Okay, that was quick. <laughs> How'd that Teresa, work for Kim? Thank <laughs> Thank you. We had our first Veterans Tribute Weekend, um, Veterans Day Weekend. It was a, an effort that we talked about some four or five years ago and finally came to fruition this year with the help of some media partners, um, Dick Broadcasting and uh, Channel 12 and Fox. And we decided we only had a certain amount of time to get it together, so we didn't have a long lead time. But we thought what we would do is enter into it for the first two days, just do a two day event, stick our toe in the water, figure it out, see what we do right, what we do wrong, what's going to stick. So that's exactly what we did. We've got, um, we learned a lot, and I'll walk you just walk you through what we did and then talk about some future. So Friday night, we kicked off with live entertainment at Tar Heel Concert Lounge. If you have not been there, I can't say enough about what Brian has done with this place. It's phenomenal. The inside is gorgeous. There's, the sound system is a quarter million dollars. I mean, it was, it was a fabulous show. So um, they had a Journey Tribute Band. That went well. Um, Saturday morning, we had... Uh, the Veterans Day Parade. They had the um, uh, Shriners were involved in that. They were here for their um, uh, national Falcon. 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 Yeah, ceremonial. Yeah. Ceremonial. So uh, they had uh, the, uh, probably 30 um, people, 30 units in there in the, at the end of the parade. We had a float. You had a float for um, Visit Jacksonville. And on that float, our, our goal was to introduce the Arts Council Bulldog mascot initiative for Jacksonville. So we have the first one here. I don't know if everybody's seen it, but <clears throat> we had signage on the float as well to promote the afternoon event. And we got wind of, through some people we knew, um, of a digital influencer to help us introduce our mascot Bulldog. And actually, you've heard us talk about digital influencers before. We got one of a four-legged nature. Ruben the Bulldog is a YouTube star, and he has 125,000 followers on YouTube. It's nuts. He's in Wilmington, um, and he gets Marines from all over the world sending him things for, for his dog, Ruben. So they uh, came to Jacksonville. You'll see that's Ruben, and that's his human. They rode on the float. <clears throat> oh, here we go. So we do. I have heard of him? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we promoted the uh, after event and the um, with signage and flyers, 
And one of the biggest hits, truly, after the fact, there were several things that were big hits. Reuben was great. People loved taking their pictures with him. The mascot went over really well. I can say I talked to probably three or four different groups and businesses that are interested in having a bulldog for their business already. So it was very well received. Everybody wanted their pictures with him, uh, either Reuben or the mascot. <clears throat> <clears throat> There's our original Jackson mascot. <laughs> <laughs> so we, had a, <laughs> we did a, um, a touch a truck promotion at <coughs> Commons that uh, went over well. We know that they love the kids love the trucks. We would love to expand that next year and have a lot more military vehicles. Um, Susan and her department did a great job and put some games and hay rides and things together for the family to come out and enjoy with their children. And then we wrapped it up with a concert with um, a one hour acoustic set with Mike Carrado, who is a, um, a local Marine here, who has a pretty good following. We also had in the course of the afternoon, uh, the Museum of the Marine did some TED-like talks. We won't call them TED Talks because that's illegal. Um, but they were well received, really well received. A couple were more attended than uh, well attended. Uh, the the Montfort Point went over really big. The room was pretty full for that one. Glenn, did you want to add anything about that? Uh, the, the, also, the Wounded Warrior Barracks uh, mm -hmm. drew a surprising uh, crowd, and that was um, a surprise to me to be candid with you that they have so many there for that, but it, it was wonderful to hear those stories. And mm -hmm. those things. Very well received. So, our Monday morning, we didn't have anything set for Sunday. Monday morning was the um, Veterans Day celebration uh, or ceremony, actual, that, that actually, that the DAV puts together. So, this is a couple photos from that. We have a five-year plan of how to turn this event into a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday event. Would be great for visitation, but the whole, um, you know, premise for the whole weekend is really to celebrate our community and our veterans and pay tribute to the veterans in our community. Um, I, I heard from a lot of business people they want to get on board, so I think we can really take this thing and, and make it something really huge for our community and for our veterans. <clears throat> Good work. It was fun. It was a lot of work. Kim, thank you so much for everything you did and holding us together. And thank Definitely you, Susan. Team, team effort. And Susan, Susan had a fantastic team out there. The rock wall was very popular. Mm -hmm. I, that thing never fails to draw a crowd. Um, laser tag and everything else. The idea was to have something for families, family oriented. Mm -hmm. So that's what that was. And we got some families. Good. How did you guys feel about it, Susan? You thought it was a great first year event. Um, you know, it was a good good afternoon activity for Saturday, and we thought it was a good turnout. So I think it has a great potential, and keep adding those sort of activities and tying it in with different components. I think it's a really nice, well-rounded event that has a lot of potential. Thank you. Thank you for everything. So since we've met last, in addition to this, Oktoberfest happened the last weekend of October. And they added a Thursday night event. This was the first year for them to do this. They called it Cheers for Charities, which was a beer and wine tasting. They have decided moving forward, I'm happy to say, that uh, it will be the, a taste of Oktoberfest. So there's a great opportunity for them there to add some additional money and to add to some visitation. The softball tournament went well. We had good weather and they were able to get hotel rooms. So that went well for them. And Friday night was a success. Here's our mayor tapping the keg. It was official ceremonial. Uh, and Saturday was fabulous. We had great weather. The, um, they were full all day. They ran out at the very end. The German food truck ran out of food. The Oktoberfest people ran out of food right before the end, not too early. And um, the beer folks said they were with one, within one hour they would have run out. So it was very well attended. Raised some good money for our community. So upcoming events this week is FTM Fashion Week so in Paris, and that they're doing their event this year at Sturgeon City. Um, if you haven't heard, they have brought in, I think I maybe mentioned it, um, 
Cynthia Bailey is coming um, to do the red carpet for them, and she is what she's the model and the, one of the big stars in the Housewives of Atlanta. So she'll be flying into our airport on Saturday. She has 2.6 million followers on Instagram. So she's done a couple of posts promoting FTM Fashion Week. So my understanding is they're sold out. So we look forward to a great event for them for this weekend. So they'll give us a report and we'll report back in January. Also, we have Winterfest coming up. One of our favorite events, uh, the first weekend in December. So um, I've been monitoring the campaign. Things have been rolling for about three or four weeks, and it's looking good for Mara. Susan, it's great for Mara. Everything's good. So we will report back. We expect some milk. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As mentioned, the flash report for Oktoberfest is in your agenda, and for those uh, following along, otherwise it's online, as is all of our agenda parts are online. Um, for here today. I think that ends our part of the presentation, sir. Yes. Thank you. Any questions regarding any of the events? October Fest? Mm -hmm. I, I really do uh, like your uh, concept to, to spread that uh, event over that four day period. I think that there's a lot of opportunities, like mm -hmm. as you said getting different components going, tying it all together, and maybe people could travel throughout the city doing yep. different things. I forgot to mention now that you say that, is um, we did have tour guided tours of the Memorial Gardens. Okay, good. And we checked with some of the folks that went on the tour, and it was phenomenal. They could not say enough wonderful things about it, and so glad that they had toured it. Us, most of them had not toured the um, gardens before. Did we so. include the Freedom Fountain as part of that? Or we did. Okay. We did a sort of a drive-by okay. on that and talked about it and led right into the gardens. So it was received very well. So we intend to keep that USO is also going to be involved next year. So we got a lot of good things brewing. Good. Thank you. Any, any questions or anything? Thank you for your work. You're welcome. Appreciate it very Thank much. Thank you. Um, I guess that covers item six and seven. Um, we will move on to item number eight. We have Paula with us from Sturgeon City. Paula, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Chairman and committee members. Um, we're excited to give you guys an update. Um, we've been pretty busy um, in a good way um, at the center, so we're excited to report on that. Um, as Teresa mentioned, um, which I'll get to in a minute here, but our biggest upcoming thing is um, Fashion Week um, coming on Saturday, a couple days away. And of course, we also helped host the, host the Shriners um, for their fall ceremonial for two days of events at our center while they were here to tack on to the Veterans Day Parade. And the Oktoberfest, I didn't mention that. Yes, and the, um, the Cheers for Our Charities Oktoberfest event, their Thursday evening tasting was in our facility as well. And I, it's my understanding that will continue to take place at our facility what is it? in future years. The um, Cheers for Our Charities okay. Oktoberfest event, the Thursday evening, it's actually convenient for them because they can kick off in a downtown location um, and move things from one site over into the park, you know, for Friday and for the rest of the weekend. So it's actually pretty convenient for them, too, in terms of that. Um, so this is actually, this photo is actually from some of the fall decorations, the Shriner set up. Um, they come in with quite the crew. Many of you I know are probably aware. Um, we had a great time with them um, over their weekend in our facility. Um, they added a lot of decorations to the site um, since they were there for a couple of days for multiple events. Um, but I just wanted to kind of give you a quick recap here of the things that we've had going on recently. Um, so actually um, back in October, um, we had the silent auction event, which was a sort of small reschedule from the Diamonds and Denim for the Partnership for Children. Um, it wasn't their full event, but a piece of it, and they were able to come to our facility. Um, we've got an outdoor shot. They actually were one of our first folks to rent some high top tables and set them up outside under our covered area. So you see they got some great use of that. They had great weather that evening, so that was nice. Um, the bottom photo is actually some of the tables set up um, for the ladies' breakfast. Um, during the Shriners. So their visit to our facility included a Friday evening component, which was like a cookout. They brought in a bunch of their own like grills and food trucks and stuff and had a big party. They had a Saturday morning ladies breakfast and then they had their Saturday evening fall ceremonial. Between the breakfast and the ceremonial, they also had a hospitality window um, at our facility where folks could come over from the hotels and things like that and be able to do hospitality at our facility. So they're pretty much there from Friday night, you know, through all day Saturday in different capacities. So we were happy to be able to accommodate that. Um, for them. Um, on the 24th, we helped partner with the city 
um, to help host the Economic Development um, Plan Regional Forum. This is put on um, part of the UNC School of Government um, group puts that on. So they brought that to our facility um, for the Jacksonville area. Um, again, also on that same day, the 24th was um, in the evening, was that Cheers for Our Charities event as part of on Onslow Oktoberfest. Um, on the 30th, we had the Partnership for Children Back um, for a training. Um, and then on November 4th, we helped host a SWANK meeting. That is Stormwater Association of North Carolina. Um, so we were happy to partner on that. Um, our stormwater manager, Pat Donovan Brandenburg, um, they take turns kind of hosting, so to speak, throughout the state. And it was her turn to host. So she thought, what a great chance to bring several folks from areas around the state to our center. We've actually had a couple people. We played our video for them. They loved our story. They've not really heard as much about Sturgeon City specifically. They've actually been sharing our story and our information on their Facebook pages um, for other towns across North Carolina. So um, kind of a neat little um, feedback piece from that event. And then, of course, as I mentioned, um, on the 8th and 9th, we had the Shriners Fall Ceremonial with us. Um, and they, um, I received a bit of information, of course, our hoteliers here that are with us know more than me probably, but um, they had at least 170 actual rooms booked. And many of those, of course, were for multiple nights um, because some folks came in as early as Tuesday and Wednesday um, mm -hmm. and stayed through the weekend. Not everyone came that early, you know, depending what they are capable of. Um, and they estimate their largest mm -hmm. event um, numbers wise, they had between um, a, close to 400 people over the course of the night on Friday night. Um, for their big ceremonial on Saturday, they think it was just about 300 were there during the main <coughs> ceremonial. A few actually filtered in later to come just for the band and dancing um, after the official ceremonial. So between three and 350 were probably on site um, that night. Of course, some of the same people overlapping those events, um, but folks do come to bits and pieces. <coughs> so um, that was a great success. And again, we really, we had a great time. Um, you know, they're a fun group. So our staff really enjoy getting to work with them and have them in our facility. Um, and I've got a couple photos here on your left are a couple from that um, silent auction event for partnership with children um, because they weren't sure exactly how large it would be. They actually did a standing only event in our facility. So they actually used our main room for their silent auction items and set those up all down the middle in rectangular tables um, with some round tables for their food stations. And then they actually put their bar and their high top tables out in our lobby area. So kind of getting to see some neat different ways the center can be used. Um, and then I've got a couple photos here from the ladies' breakfast um, that was catered by Golden Corral. So they took some photos when they were here, which they've also been sharing on social media. Um, and then they took some photos of the ladies' group um, and a couple of the different decorations. Again, they come with quite the team and they created this whole, they have a theme for the year. It was about giving children wings. So it was all about butterflies, but then tying in butterflies with fall decorations. And so it was, it was really neat just to see the way they added the different decorations to the facility. Um, and this is just a quick recap of some of our upcoming events. So again, um, on Saturday, we'll have the Fashion Week event here. Um, a lot of these, you know, so far are more local events, you know, things with our other nonprofits and things of that nature, but we've got a few starting to filter in um, that are those regional events um, that bring people in. We've got um, a couple, several holiday dinners and winter birthday parties coming up. Um, and we've got um, uh, the Board of Realtors that actually been with us back in September for their breakfast meeting. They're coming back for their evening meeting in January. Um, we're working with Scott and the Sports Commission um, to have their fitness expo in January at our facility. Um, we'll be um, hosting the board development training at the end of January that the city um, sponsors with United Way and the Community College and uh, Kino out of Wilmington. And then um, we actually have just been in talks recently where um, the Jazz in the City group is going to be bringing their event to our facility in February. Um, so we're excited to be able to help host that um, as well. And um, I'm sure I, I haven't even added on the ones we're already talking about for March, April, May, June. Um, you know, I've got folks calling me for August of next year, November of next year. I've got a gentleman actually visiting at the beginning of December looking at a wedding reception site for November of next year. Um, so we're, we're continuing to roll on into those additional bookings and, um, you know, we're just receiving wonderful feedback. So, you know, thank so, you so much for all the support that you provided us. So Paula, would you say that you're exceeding your initial expectations in terms of booking? Yes. The amount of that <laughs> yes, I think so for sure. Available locally? Yes. I think we're definitely exceeding our expectations. Um, you know, it's a good problem to have, and we're, you know, we're learning a bit on the fly, to be honest. But that's that's okay. We've got a lot of support systems, so um, it's it's good. And thankfully, our staff has been really on board um, with taking on these additional tasks and excited about it. Um, you know, we've been able to, um, you know, pull in some help there and make it work, and um, it's it's going great. Tell me about your ability 
because you're hosting so many events now and it looks like it's going very well. In terms of some of these groups uh, needing uh, for catering, is your facility adequate for the catering portion of this for people bringing in food, keeping it warm? Yes, absolutely. Out? We have not had you any issues with that. Is there that you that you could talk about? Or? No, um, we're very clear with people up front that the one thing at our site is there is no cooking you know, in our catering kitchen. But we were informed that's relatively common because most caterers come with things already warm. So having just those warming cabinets, which we have three of, um, allows you, no one's even had to use more than one or two at a time um, so far for the size events that we've had. So we have plenty of those available. Um, you know, a lot of folks even just come in and set up, you know, your chafing dishes and your sternos mm -hmm. and they keep the majority of what they're doing warm that way. But having those warming cabinets has definitely been helpful for them to keep like the, the backup food warm, you know, to refill those chafing dishes. Um, and I think everyone's actually spoken really highly of our kitchen. It's very large. It's a lot larger than a lot of the ones in other facilities. Um, there's a lot of prep space in there and, you know, space to wash your dishes and do things and move around. So if you bring in a team of two or three or four people, you're not elbow to elbow in a tiny little room. You know, we've heard that um, that's been an issue for some people in, in the region and other facilities. So um, we've gotten great feedback on that as well. Um, and just the layout, too. People love being able to have food out in that lobby, that pre-function area, not have to set up your buffet or things like that within your rental space. Um, you know, so just kind of the multiple uses that that space provides in terms of that helping for the food as well. Um, has been great. So we've received great feedback on that. Any questions? Well, we're, we're excited for you. I know you have more and I'll let you do that, but um, we're, we're very happy that it's going well. We're very happy that you're generating revenues because that always helps. Yes, absolutely. Um, are you going to talk about Sturgeon City as, in terms of programming and, and that sort of thing? Yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about that and a little bit about a couple of other um, kind of tourism related things that we've got going on at the site. Um, obviously, I'd like to make a point here, you know, you're seeing me talk a lot about events, you know, our primary focus, you know, is still our educational programs and we are keeping those going at the same time. I was having a sidebar with Teresa that um, we're holding off on the final setup for Saturday's event because we have programs running right now in the building this afternoon while I'm here. We have programs running in that center tomorrow morning, as well as offsite programs going on tomorrow with our staff and we're in the midst of setting up for Saturday. Um, so we're still actually also expanding our educational programs as well. Um, one of the big things that we've been doing, we actually launched it partway through last year, is we do a weekly homeschool street science program now um, because we were getting a lot of feedback of people, parents wanting that more often because science is a hard curriculum for them to find um, locally or teach themselves if they're not comfortable with science. So we have quite a good following. Um, we cover five-year-olds through 13-year-olds with that program. We've actually been talking about launching it for the older age group as well, but we haven't quite got enough you know, interest there yet, but that's on the horizon. Um, so that's something that we're doing weekly um, that's become very popular. We usually have about um, 30 to 40 kids on site every week for that program. Um, and then, you know, all of our standard stuff is still running. But the nice thing is, you know, this is typically our slightly slower time of year for our field trips and things like that. We'll pick back up in the spring. So it's going to be a learning curve a bit, um, you know, when we get our busy spring season. And we're also booking, you know, events on the weekends and things like that. So we're, we're learning to balance that. But so far, it's, um, it's worked out really well. And we've had a few things where we needed one room and they needed one room, you know, so you can kind of be able to share the space. Um, and there hasn't been any issue with that either so far. So we've been lucky with that. Um, a little bit more about um, some of the things we're doing for tourism related efforts and um, am I able to actually click on that link possibly and show them the web page? That would be great. Thank you, Glenn. We've been updating our facility rental page, of course, our website overall as well. Um, but as we've had some events now there, maybe not. <laughs> I have a screenshot later and I can show that in a minute if necessary. But um, just to add some actual event photos so people interested in renting are seeing what the space actually looks like in different setups um, and things like that and make it a little bit easier to capture their information. If they're interested, they can actually fill out a form online there now and contact us. So just some things we're adding as we go. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> it's trying to load. Um, and again, thankful Thank you to several folks for these photos, City of Jacksonville Media Services, and if you actually want to scroll down to Kim, if you don't mind, um, and also Jared Kay, who was brought in through the city, and actually Sterling um, Stevens, who was a photographer brought in by the architect. But um, we've got a see, so we've got a form linked on here um, for the information packet, and then we've actually got a Google form linked on here where they can actually fill out if they're interested in renting. If they don't want to necessarily call up front or send a blanket email, you know, they can actually fill that out with some more specific details to help us out. 
Um, and we're continually editing this rental packet as we learn things um, from renting the facility, uh, making updates and upgrades. And thank you to the staff here that have helped us out with that as well. Um, so it's just really been great to be able to work on these things and have it available for folks. Um, and then um, something else, if we actually want to pop back to the presentation, but please take a look at the photos. You've probably seen a lot of these. <laughs> um, this image here, and I've got a couple more in the next couple slides. We um, finished out a grant recently and purchased um, actually a total of 17 um, varying two different styles of pedestal type um, signage, outdoor signage that are now at our site. Um, five of these signs label the main structures at the facility. So if someone's just walking around, they know this is the bio tower, this is what it was about. This is, you know, these are the digesters, this is what they were used for when it was still a wastewater treatment plant. And then the other 12 signs are actually educational, talking about different species of plants and animals that you'll see around the site. So this particular one is about osprey. Um, and we've actually got, um, this is one for the chlorine contact chamber. This is kind of a shot down the boardwalk. So you see how they're mounted actually on the post, um, the main posts of the boardwalk as you walk along. Um, you can see these all up and down the boardwalk um, and down the piers a little bit too in different areas, trying to also have them located where you'll actually you know, see what the sign is talking about, of course. Um, and thank you again to some help from the, the staff here on some of this and also of course to Signs by Tomorrow and um, Ryan there who's fantastic to work with. But this is just nice. So if folks are, excuse me, sorry, um, out there looking um, we don't necessarily have to be there if someone's stopping by or they're there for an event and they go out and take a break. They're learning a little bit about what we do and what our story is um, and what we're about uh, without us necessarily talking to them. Hopefully we also get a chance to talk to them um, and do that. But that was something we've added on um, that's really been a great asset to the facility. And we use, of course, as we're doing our own programs, you know, we can walk out and reference those signs and have them accessible. Um, and then, of course, we're in full swing planning for our um, Earth Day Festival again for 2020. Um, so we're very excited that we'll now be able to move that part of that over into our center and into the parking area of our center and those types of things. So it can really spread out across our entire site. Um, so we're looking at lots of ways to try to expand that for this coming year um, to be able to um, utilize that facility now that we have it. And um, we're starting to, now that we've seen how much the center's taking off, work on some more formalized marketing strategies for the center. We've been very lucky and blessed so far that we haven't really made a lot of effort ahead of time on our part. It's just been rolling in as it comes, um, but we recognize that's necessary. Um, and so that's one of the other things that we're focusing on in kind of our next phase. Um, and really right now we're just, we want to get this first year under our belt. It worked out kind of perfect that we can run a full fiscal year. You know, it really opened right before the fiscal year started, be able to see that first year and help that um, use us to continue to, you know, to continue to plan as we go forward. So, but we're really excited. And again, we just appreciate all the support that you guys have provided and the city's provided. So, um, I think that sums it up. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, as a board member of Sturgeon City, I'd like to <coughs> thank this organization for helping us uh, through this process. And once again, you can see the efforts being made in the community for um, grouping things together. Uh, without the help of the TDA, this wouldn't be possible. So you can see the connection. We're now going to bring people to the community to put into the hotels and the restaurants and everywhere else. So everybody needs to understand that all of these things are connected. And when you bring in the Sports Commission and what they're trying to do uh, with additional facilities, it's important to make that connection because they all relate to bringing more business to Jacksonville, therefore lowering the tax rate eventually. So all of these things are interconnected and we need to continue to make that message loud and clear to, to everybody. So uh, again, we want to thank you for, for what you do for aiding us and we hope that we can continue that partnership into the future. Just one last comment, I guess, will you guys be as a board looking at what your next phases are within the facilities and what, what the next renovation project may be? Yes, we're definitely having some conversations. Um, you know, we're again working to get kind of the beginnings of this, you know, get this under our belt, make sure our main goal right now is to make sure this is as good as it can possibly be, you know, and continue to even add benefits to the facility we now have, because there's always ways you can improve upon that. 
but that's leading us into the next phases of improving the rest of the site and the other things that need to go on at that property. So we're hoping that's going to continue to kind of open those doors, so to speak. So we're excited for that as well. well thank you again. Appreciate the update. Very good update. Um, next order of business, Scott, you're going to have to follow that. Hopefully you can go. Uh... I can't talk that long. So, um, it's, it's good to be here. Two months ago when, when we met, uh, we were setting up for New River Splash. So it's good to be here. And I did want to add, uh, Teresa mentioned the Oktoberfest softball tournament. I think there was eight out-of-town teams uh, for that event that uh, should have stayed at least one night for the event. Uh, there's been some challenge, you know, last year you had the hurricane and there weren't any rooms and, and even rooms this year because of the Shriners and uh, there was lots of conflict. It was still hard for some of those teams to get rooms. So I think as we go forward, we may see that. Is that a senior softball? No, it it's, softball? it's just softball. It was, yeah. Yeah. was it open? Yeah, it was open. It was, open. It was all open. Yes, yes. Yeah. So speaking of New River Splash, since we don't have uh, video capabilities today, we're going to show you some stills that uh, was taken by Kevin, by Jared, by various folks here, uh, and then we'll get into some of the numbers for New River Splash. We'll just go through these fairly quick. Look at that swimming in the New River. Um, so it's my understanding that this is the first triathlon in Jacksonville, or that anyone knows of or can remember anyway. And so we're really excited about that, obviously. The, the key to this, when we get to, hey, there's my wife and one of my sons. Um, <laughs> so there's our cornhole tournament. Vendors. There's our kids zone, thanks to, to Paula and Surgeon City and Zing Zone. And uh, Stormwater folks took people out on the boat tour. This is uh, stand-up paddleboard and kayaking at Pogies. Uh, was able to provide for us. But so th the numbers are somewhat <laughs> modest, to be honest with you. Uh, but we had 142 participants in the race part. However, we were really hoping for 40 people to do the triathlon, and we had 94. The <coughs> exciting part about that is you'll see 11% were from two plus hours away, 12% were from one to two hours away. So I think for us, for those of us in this room, that's the encouraging thing. We were correct in seeing that, hey, there's not a lot of triathlons out there. And we think that as we get this thing established and growing, we'll attract room nights from the event. So again, economic impact was, uh, you know, a little over $5,000. There's about 35 room nights, uh, but we're definitely on the right track. Um, so, sorry, with, with that, so we had a, the festival had 30 plus vendors. We had cornhole tournament. We had all the boat tours and everything, uh, dance performances. So it really was uh, a family fun day. And if you remember, this is being moved for 2020 to June 6th. So this will kick off the water and boating season as opposed to being at the end of it. The other thing with that September date, there was a lot of competition. There was June 6th. There was uh, obviously college football. There was tons of youth soccer. There was a music festival, I think, in Moorhead City. So we were up against a lot of things that day. Um, so I'm expecting a, a, a even better crowd for, for June 6th. Um, so looking ahead to 2020, we're, we're finalizing our Hall of Fame date, and then all of our dates are finalized for 2020. I think we have 17 uh, owned and operated events for next year, uh, in addition to those others that we support. Uh, as Paula mentioned, we're kicking off 2020 with our Fit for You Fitness and Health Expo at Sturgeon City on January 25th. That morning we'll be, begin with uh, what Marisa has named the Fabulous 5K. Uh, it's $5. It's really just a fun run. It's not time uh, to sort of unofficially kick off our race series, but also to get folks down to the Fitness Expo. And then the very next weekend is our Sledgehammer Beach Run uh, that starts our race series for 2020. And uh, our our race series was the race series slide in there. No. Our race series was uh, very successful for year one. We definitely saw momentum as it went. We had uh, 1,900 different folks participate in the series. 20% uh, did more than one race. Uh, and as I just said, we really saw that momentum grow to the end. So we're expecting big things in 2020. Uh, the only other thing I want to share with you. So for those that were around when you uh, helped commission the Huddle Up group to do a strategic plan for the Sports Commission, 
they offered something, they created this uh, program formula called the Sports Tourism Index. And so I went on one day and spent a little over an hour answering all these questions for them to give us a score. So I wanted to share that with you. So we're considered a tier three market based on our population. Um, so where we were lacking a little bit, and we know this because we're talking about it, were facilities. Um, our facility score was a, a 5.6. Uh, the average was about 9.1. Uh, everywhere else, we, we were a little low in destination strength. But we were uh, we we were said that we had the highest, one of the best organizational structural scores that they had seen across the nation, and that's a kudos to you guys because the way they their statement about that was. Uh, strong sports tourism organizations at this level generally have strong community support through their boards, advisory groups, and community stakeholders. And their comment uh, under uh, facilities with focus should be on driving a higher level discussion in the community on facility development of new venues that would have tourism and also community uses. Um, so our, our, our score was a 35.55 for whatever that's worth, uh, which was higher than the average on, on the, the national score was 34.74. But I, I thought it was interesting to get some outside feedback that echo everything that we all say in this room. So it, just another indicator that we're on the right track. Uh, we were also very strong in local created events, as you know, since that's kind of the uh, trend that we're having to follow with the creating and starting events. So thank you for your time. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Scott. Um, I have a quick question regarding the New River Splash and the triathlon. <clears throat> Did you get any feedback from uh, the participants in regards to the quality and, uh, of the triathlon itself? Because I know that, that that's what's going to help you attract uh, the growth of it and people coming back. Do they find it sure. challenging? Did they find the course adequate? Yeah, so great feedback. Um, you know, I would say 99% positive. Obviously, there's always a couple of comments, some that we had already identified by the time the event was over and some that we learned from our surveys. Uh, so, yes, it was. You know, the this Highway 17 course was fine. It makes all of us a little bit nervous. Um, so we've identified a course that would actually probably... Talk, can you talk about that for a little more? About the, about the course. Yeah, so, the, so they went out from the marina there. Uh, through downtown, uh, out across Old Bridge, and then they, they got on 17 and went down past Harley Davidson to Merle Road. There's basically a big loop back there, then back on 17 and back down. So, you know, with the officers and with the planning, I mean, no one told us that they felt necessarily unsafe. There weren't any accidents, thank goodness. But you're still going with cars zooming by you uh, on, a, on a busy highway, even though it's not as busy on a Saturday morning. So we have identified a route that we think would be very scenic, very safe, but it does go through base. So we've started that process of the paperwork and trying to get, but obviously we'd always have to have a plan B if it went through base. But uh, I think with some tweaks, even if we use last year's course, it's fine. Uh, Cause obviously with a first year event, you always learn something to change or improve upon. Uh, so yeah, good. Folks seemed to enjoy it. They said it was fun. Uh, we only, you know, at every race, Susan can echo this, somebody gets off course. You have 99 that do it right, one that do it wrong. So one guy did like an extra lap somewhere down there uh, by Harley Davidson or something. But uh, other than that, it, it was really smooth. Uh, the, the water aspect of it went great. What was the water route? I didn't so it was basically, uh, from, from the, they went straight out around the buoy and back. And come back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it, it was a good event. It was, uh, again, very positive comments. Uh, we had folks that <clears throat> didn't do the triathlon, but after they saw that, they said, I'm going to train and do the try, do the try next year. Uh, we had folks that did the duathlon where they biked and ran. They didn't swim. Uh, so lots of comments about, uh, uh, now that I see that, I'm going to try to do the whole thing next year. So we'll, we'll see how those numbers grow. Ernie's definitely going to be there next Good. year. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with, with June 6th, we were a little worried about I mean, the You could be a little more excited. Just jump in. I was going to say, with June 6th, we were a little worried about the heat for next year, but it cannot be any hotter than it was September 28th, I promise you. The humidity and the heat today were rough. 
Seven. Thank you. Any questions for Scott? Anyone? Yeah. Any comments? Thank you again. Appreciate the, uh, the update. Um, next order of business is going to be a report from tourism uh, work by the Chamber of Commerce. Donna, the floor is yours. I guess this will be your last. Is that accurate? I was hoping you'd say that at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always welcome. <laughs> Later are we. Yeah. But thank you for your um, for your time with us. We know that you've got uh, new new great things ahead of you, and we wish you well. Just want to thank you for for being with us the time that that you were with us. So thank you. I'll turn the floor over to you. Well, October was a busy month. We, I, Onslow County Tourism hosted two press trips, um, one of them being four ladies from the I-95 Welcome Center. Um, except for the manager, the other three had never been to Onslow County. And I kind of showed them through in a whirlwind tour over a day and a half, and they were just so impressed. And the businesses they visited, they actually took their brochure information back, kind of negating the whole system of having to go through the Department of Commerce to be able to have their brochures <laughs> in their welcome center. Because they were like, this place is awesome. She go, And they were all agreed that it was a hidden gem of eastern North Carolina. And again, they were a little up in age, so they had people that participated, or family members and loved ones that participated in the Vietnam War. Um, so when we went out to the gardens, needless to say, I always have tissue in my purse because I know it always happens, but I mean, it was a very moving experience for them. So, and just, and I always kind of like to take them at night and then I, they go back during the day. So it worked out well for both trips. Um, the trip, I had a lady, her name is Karen Warren from um, Atlanta, Georgia. Her father and brother both served in the Marine Corps, so it was very special for her. But they, all of them had such complimentary things to say about um, our beautiful county, and I look forward to the earned media that it's going to kind of glean for us. Um, I have two more left for the year. One was a surprise for about two weeks ago. Visit NC called and asked, would I please partner with them at the 365 conference in March on our media pitches that we do at our roundtable session. The person that's coming, I felt like she looked straight through me. Um, but out of all the places in North Carolina that she could have chose to come visit, she chose Onslow County to come go shelling and kayaking. And she's going up to Aurora to do something else, but she's coming from Colorado. So we'll have her for about a day and a half. So very excited that we were invited to participate in that. And then I have a social media influencer, the NC Trip and folks, Carl and Christine, and they're coming and staying the night with us and doing the Mike's Farm Ho-Ho Show and Hayride. And also they can share, help share the news next year. I told them we didn't need to talk about it this year, but they're coming to visit this year so we can plan for it for next year. And I do have a photo shoot out there tomorrow evening so that we can get um, printable images at a high resolution because I've been asked about that a lot this year from different media outlets. Can we provide pictures, which all, all I have is a cell phone. But just very busy. The website's at 82% is what I'm being told. <laughs> We're getting so close. I'm so excited. Um, there's still like a lot of listing pictures that I'm going to be trying to get over the next couple of weeks, <clears throat> just businesses that don't have a very good social media page or they just don't have photography in general that I'm going to have to run in and click a few photos. But we're kind of getting them, seeing that tunnel, that light's getting really bright. So it's exciting. I'm hoping to have that complete before I leave. Um, I'm going to help Ms. Teresa on another little project we're going to talk about this afternoon. So it would be nice to see that kind of complete before I leave. But the gal that's coming in, Ms. Salem Clark, she's from Duplin County. She's been the assistant um, director over there for the past eight years. Um, she's a graduate of UNCG from their um, tourism program there. She was kind of one of the first ones, and that really got implemented a while back. But she's got a great out-of-the-box out thinker, um, and she's been ready to kind of spread her wings a little bit, so I think she's a perfect person coming in. She's all of about four feet tall. <laughs> um, but God, she has the sweetest, the most, I mean, she's got the best personality, and I know everybody's going to love her, so, and she works really well with the community, so they love her in Duplin County, so I'm glad we got to steal her. <laughs> what is her name again? Her name is Salem Clark. Salem Clark. Mm -hmm. 
But I guess with that, I will turn it over to Miss Maggie here because uh, with her military union recruitment initiative, and she can tell a little bit about, I guess, her experiences with the Shriners when they were here visiting our area. I didn't. Uh, before you turn it over, I didn't hear you talk about, um, is it Mike MC from Mountains to the Sea? I know that they came through and had a stop in Swansboro. Are you aware of that? Or? I was aware of that. Unfortunately, I wasn't in town when that actually happened, yeah. but I did see photos of that. They did do a ride through kind of like for a hydration stop. Yeah, it was really well attended. Yeah. It was, it was really pretty neat. They did that a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and I, there was quite a few folks that came through. We were I participated in that one because we were out with cowbells on the mm -hmm. street as they were coming through. Very cool. So, okay, thank you. Maggie? Okay, um, so I didn't really prepare anything, so I apologize if I missed something. Um, I had a great experience with the Shriners. Um, I worked closely with Mike Smith um, in preparing the welcome bags and the um, poutine and his wife, which was wonderful. Um, and I think they overall had a great experience. Once I talked to Mike after the event, he was very, very impressed with the community and what everything that went on. So that was great. Um, and then I'm still working on the military union coming um, towards the beginning of May. Um, they are, we have three base tours for them, uh, one at Lejeune and one at the New River. And we're going to Cherry Point with them, which is very exciting. Um, and we have most of their agenda complete, uh, just a few more activities we have to talk about and that's about what's going on still trying to recruit more mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. thank you any questions no i'd also like to say thank you to donna for the work that she's done for the county and also for us uh, she's been a wonderful addition so uh, we wish her the best in Tampa. Well, thank you it was the my most favorite job out of all that I've had over the years traveling around. I'm still sulking about it somewhere, but I guess I'll get over it once I get there. But anyway, it's a good opportunity for my husband, and he makes way more money than I do, so if I want to eat, I need to go home. So. But anyway, I will always see in my mind it's been a, a really great opportunity, I think, Lorette, for asking me to come on board so I got to meet a lot of um, people that I wouldn't have got to meet otherwise and have you know really great relationships with our tourism partners throughout the county so everybody's fabulous especially our hoteliers thank you all right do you want to add anything oh other than I'm just pissed off <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask unless you want me to tell Thank you the you. truth. <laughs> no, no, she, uh, you're right. Everything everyone said is true, and I wish I could have kept it for a few more years. But again, Salem Clark that is coming in, she mirrors a lot of what Donna does. They've worked together on projects, and in this day of email, text, and cell phones, Donna's going to still be working for Onslow County. We just won't have to pay her for it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's efficient. I like it. <laughs> it's all, good. all right. Thank you. Thank you very much for those great updates. Very informative. We, we appreciate it very much. Um, we'll move on to item number 11, uh, getting into some finances and, and uh, some numbers. Um, we have the annual financial report. Alan, is that your uh, just one, well, I'll, I'll just mention that each of you have the uh, annual audit report uh, that you're placed there. It was uh, with the online agenda, and it's printed here for you. Our new auditors, Cherry Beckert, could not be at the meeting today, but they will be at the meeting on January 30th to formally present this and answer any questions. So please make sure you bring this <clears throat> with you at, at that meeting. Get a chance to look at it and see any questions. That would be great. <clears throat> a great opportunity to, to ask at that time. So, um, thank you, Alan. And I guess the uh, item number 12 is yours as well to go through the uh, first quarter report. Correct. Uh, I have the unaudited uh, first quarter financial statements uh, with the quarter ended September 30th. That is on page 19. 
You can see that the revenue through September 30th is almost $400,000, and that's right at 40% of our budget. So that's a good pace there. Our administration costs, which consist of the uh, paying part of the annual audit fee and the administrative fee to the city. That's what the operating expenses are under administration. Under tourism promotion, we have 52,900 in operating expenses there, and that's uh, a contribution that we made to the Sports Commission, part of their uh, annual commitment that you have there, we paid for half of that. And then some commitments to Fashion Week and the MCCS Grand Prix. And then the other expenses uh, for 37,119 or the renewal projects, such as the reunion project, the business meeting projects, uh, that's what we're paying out of that line there. So you can see that your revenue of 397, total expenditures of 98,000, and we're at 10% of our budget on our expenses. We have revenue over our expenditures of almost $300,000 for the year. Ellen, thank you, and for the sake of transparency, um, and for the viewers, we are still only paying direct invoices for anything that we support. That is correct. We're not giving any entity any money. That's we correct. are just paying for whatever we approve and That's we're correct. receiving those bills and, and expending those checks. That's correct. Thank you. Any questions regarding the uh, collections? Yeah, I like the last video, three hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which lead us into item number thirteen. We'll actually be going through the occupancy tax collection and some charge charts. Alan, is that you or Glenn? I'll take it yeah. down, please. This is the good and the bad, but no other here. Mm -hmm. um, this one is is that while Western and McDaniel are drive, you know, down. Uh, remember, this would have been the first year, first. Um, one year later from Florence is where we are here. So we expected that to happen, but we knew we couldn't maintain that kind of level as it was there. So overall, though, you're only down 0.4% um, for the year to date um, from the previous year to date. So that's not a bad thing. The chart makes it look really bad, but uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to tell you that declining thing there, that looks like some comic strip. That's it's because you bad. have Carolina Blue on that. Uh, oh. October was a little rough when yeah. I got the star report for the county, too. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, but that's a natural. Yeah. yeah. But, and so when you look at it over the rolling time period, it's a little easier to, to see here what's going on because even... Um, you know, back in the previous 12, you know, and such there, we've had some situations where we had that moving along like that as it was, too. So here's the collections to date. I mean, you know, $2,000 off from what the remainder of it was. So, I mean, it's um, we've had worse months, but we know that we're not going to have the, the revenue that we had in FY19. So that's the point. Well, hopefully not as a result of another hurricane. Absolutely. <laughs> I will say that um, in, in, in a summary to that, we really believe that the things that you've allowed us to invest in with the strategic initiative are giving us um, things that we can work with to make things more memorable and have easier times of making something happen at various times of the year. Um, it's an investment in what we've done here. I mean. The, more, the Veterans Tribute Weekend, um, we probably wouldn't have had time to do that for previous years. Now we've got something we can build upon. We can build upon Memorial Day, build upon these things that what it is that we're known for and goes with our brand of receive a hero's welcome. So those are the things that are really important to look at from that point. Thank you. Thank you. Next order of business is a little census moment to sort of uh, keep you informed of Census 101. You'll find that in your packet on page 25 of 26. Um, basically a one-pager that, that clearly uh, educates uh, the importance of Census, and, and Glenn, I'll turn that over Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. We're trying to do this because we want to make sure that we count every person living in our community, and we count them once in the right place. It is required by the Constitution. And it's used for representation and redistricting. Uh, many people know that the city has to use it for its wards and things such as that. But it also is an important part of how funds get distributed. For the United States, it's estimated that about $1,623 per citizen is allocated per person within North Carolina. Within North Carolina, on um, things that are distributed by population, it's about $205. We know that we didn't have 22,000 people counted in the last census. 
Um, it caused um, <coughs> Jacksonville to drop in rank from 10th in the, uh, in the state to 14th because of our loss of population. And North Carolina and all lost as a chance for an additional congressional seat at that time. So what we're, we saw was is that we lost also <coughs> at $357 million in federal funds and $45.1 million in state funds for a total of $402 million over the decade that could have come to our community for schools, roads, things such as that, that this community and everyone in it would have benefited from. So it's while we don't want to look at census as just a money deal, it is important for that purpose as it was. But it also has those wonderful demographics that tells the story of the community and it's used by businesses to decide where they're going to locate. You can't get looked at now unless you show up in the census in a proper way. And local governments, obviously, we use it for a lot of demographic information and particularly for preparedness information. Real estate developers use it to decide where they're going to build homes and do things such as that. So this year is going to be even easier to respond. For most of the residents of Onslow County, they'll be getting a card about March 12th. And it'll ask them to um, go online and fill it out and do it. You can do it on the phone if you want to, or if you're old-fashioned, just say, click the dot, and they'll send you a piece of paper for it. There will be three specific areas in, the in the, our area that because of low internet penetration, they will give them paper first instead of allow sending them the card first. So know that the census is secure. It's got to be held confidential. All census workers take an oath that's a lifetime oath. If they divulge anything, uh, it's a federal crime to do so as it was. And, of course, doing the census, just as it was in the biblical time, it's your civic duty to do so. So we hope everyone would make that happen. Thank you, Glenn. Any questions regarding census? It is extremely <coughs> important to our community that we really try to emphasize the importance of, of the reporting. Uh, it's very important to us. Um, Next order of business, Mr. the chairman, one, sir, before please. you leave that, Glenn, uh, can we share with the public, are there some upcoming training seminars or anything that the public... Uh, there are. We've, had to, we've had to delay some. One thing about, you know, in this community between Thanksgiving and, and um, New Year's Day, you might as well not plan too much things that um, to get down to serious business. So we had to move some to January, and we'll make sure you folks are aware. But we're having one that's for the faith community. Um, we'll be having the school and military, and uh, we're moving toward those of having some special outreach efforts to do so. Okay, so our citizens uh, in the city and county oh, will, yes. be, will have access to classes and training. And Absolutely. Training. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great point. Any, yeah, uh, Quinn, for anybody in the room, anybody watching that would be interested in helping out with this, do you know, is there a, you know, I, I see the web address here. Is there a, a point where it would be a cutoff that they would have to make that known by then? You're they, talking about like a job? Yes. Oh, they're hiring that. Yeah. Is there, so a, is there a cutoff for that? When they fill all the jobs. Okay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Perfect. they are paying, from what I understand, Glenn, yeah, don't quote me on it, about, yeah. I want to say, uh, 12 to $15 an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, and in some, some, for some categories, it's now gone to 18 to 20 Right. Within our community. So it's not like oh, you minimum wage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great>. <laughs> <laughs> Go online, it's right there for you. That's a great <laughs> do it. 2020census.gov slash jobs. Oh, yeah, they, they're looking. Thank you. Um, Glenn, one city moment? Absolutely. Well, we think the no brainer was to make it the Veterans Parade. And while you saw some slides from this as a deal, I thought that, um, you know, here was the mayor out there, um, you know, as part of the parade and the sheriff behind him. And, of course, um, here was the you know, grand marshal who would not get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've right. never had to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, everybody thought Colonel Morris was the grand marshal. <laughs> but anyway, it was just a glorious day. People really, it was, uh, some people feel like that, uh, you know, to give kudos to those in the room. I mean, Pat and Lee Walker started this thing. And um, they must feel pride seeing how many people came out for it and the type of reception it got. And, uh, you know, wow, I mean, this is, this is it. And this was the first place award winner. It was by um, the Door Church. And um, wow. it was pretty impressive, the diorama that they put up there on, the, um, on, the, on their float as it was. Very impressive as it was there. And um, those guys, I know they had to be tired by they got through with that mile and a half. <laughs> but um, lots of people participating, giving tribute to the veterans and to those people. And then obviously, um, this is the second place award winner, um, the Girl Scout troops um, 
545 and 1 and 2 or something. But anyway, it was, it was a nice little event there. And so I think this is the right thing to have done. Here's Council Member Jackson with his mother out there. And the cooties have the best hats. <laughs> <laughs> and this was ours, and we won third place. That's all awesome. right. right. So we were happy about that. Thank you, buddy. And Ruben, what a, what a, tramp, a, tr a trooper he was out there mm -hmm. as well. And of course, city staff participate in this thing. There's always food to be picked up and things to do. <laughs> and they, you know, and, and I'm glad you said that because really without the support of the staff, I mean, we got just a tremendous crew out there that always is ready, for, whether it's races or so many different events that, that they add value to, and we want to thank them for all they do and their support services. Particularly since I don't think, Pat and Lee, you had, you had horses when you first started. Did you? <laughs> Horse and buggy. There you go. Oh, I was going to ask, oh, ask Pat and Lee that when, was the transportation when did it start? It you remember started in 1998. 1998. Yes. And we had 11 units. Wow. wow. We Far more than that. Mm -hmm. Huh? Far more than that this year. Yes. And we actually did 11 years ourselves. Wow. And now this was the 20th. Great wow. work. Something to be proud of, for sure. Is there any other comments or business? Uh, Mr. Massey just came. Yes. Apologize for regressing a little bit on the okay. census. <laughs> Earlier this week, uh, Bob Coates who had talked to the uh, Military Affairs Commission and the North Carolina Commanders Council on the employment, said because it's a federal employment process, it doesn't happen quickly. So anybody that's interested should go, to, they can go online, ncgov. Uh, NC Census, you know, I mean not NC Census, 2020census.gov slash employment and, and fill out an application. And what he said is there were, they're, they're looking to fill 5,000 positions in the state. Wow. And, and that for people that, uh, you know, they've got an, a special exception for the pay that's coming from census job mm -hmm. wouldn't impact on some of your benefits like food stamps or things like that, wouldn't count towards, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your, your income yeah, level on that. So they're really trying to, to get those positions filled. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to bring it up to you, everybody's attention, and this is not good news. Uh, we have an issue developing out at the gardens. A um, couple of weeks ago, my daughter received some photos online of a lady bathing her dogs in the pond. Oh, and then we had pictures followed on Facebook saying that, well, I was picking up the quarters that people dropped. So there was a young Marine in there who was literally doing this. He was reaching down, putting change in his pockets. Um, all of this is taking place after dark. I attempted to notify the base and let them know. They sent an MP out. He very nicely told me that even though we have signs out there saying, please don't enter the water and no smoking beyond this point and whatnot, there is no law behind that. So what we have to do now, we have to get a directive signed by the general of the base enforcing this so that when an MP finds somebody out there in the water or destructing any of the monuments, they can arrest them. Right now, all they can do is ask them to leave. Um, JPD has no authority because it's base property. Sheriff's Department, again, can chase them off, but they can't do anything. So we have been advised that what we probably need to do is have some cameras installed at the different monuments. Um, memorials. Mm -hmm. So we're looking into this now to see where this is going. But if any of you have a word with any of uh, General Alfred's ear, please tell him that this is something we need done. 
because otherwise sooner or later, this is why I figure our lights are getting broke in the pond. Um, if we can ask you to somehow formalize that maybe in a letter format to us, to the board, and then we can uh, obviously follow up accordingly. Be happy to. Yeah, that's but I want to grill. I can't yeah. even imagine anybody would do something so. Oh, it's. I'm I'm sure sure some of the stuff I don't even know what board to call. Hey, uh, some of the stuff that we've seen and know about. Well, thank you for, out there, for bringing that to our attention. We appreciate that. Any comments or questions? Just Regarding? mentioned that the Corman's uh, Memorial Foundation um, notified us today they'd like to be on your agenda for your January meeting to okay. um, give you an update on their status. Well, that would be great. Thank you. All right, with no further business, no further action, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.